Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, R6330. And before I begin, I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a drink. Every pint of beer helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you. First, turn on the router. Take the power adapter. Plug the power adapter into an outlet. And connect the other end into the router. Then press the power button. When the router is powered on, the light will turn on. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, connect the cable from your internet provider or from your modem to the internet port. This port is often labeled internet and typically has a unique color. Each cable should be inserted until there is a click. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable supplied with the router into a LAN port. Plug the other end of the cable into your computer's Ethernet port. Please, wait a few minutes for connection. The router is connected to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But first, I'll show you another way to connect the router if you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power source and plug in the cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If your router is new, your Wi-Fi network name will be the name of the router. Your router has its own Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a label. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. Open your browser and go to the URL that you see on the screen. Use the address bar, not the search bar. At the beginning, click here. Then read Netgear terms and conditions and click I agree button. Now you must select no. I want to configure the internet connection myself. And click next button and then click OK. If your router settings don't look like mine, your router has different firmware. I made a video for each kind of firmware. You can find all the links to them in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The admin passwords is used to log into your router's web interface. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write your new password in the first field. Duplicate it in the second field. The next step is to select two security questions and write answers to them. You need them in case you need to reset the admin password. Click Next. The following page displays the information required to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next button. If the router has not been updated in a while, the following page may initiate the firmware update process automatically. 
If a newer version is available, a firmware update is a good idea. It will take about 3 minutes for firmware update. Please, do not turn off the power or press reset button. If the new firmware is not available, just click OK. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. You can do it if you want to. I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to close this window. Log into the router's web interface again, if you are logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. At the top right, you can change the router's web interface language. To access the internet, go to Advanced. Setup Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. On the following page, select Internet Settings. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. All that information, you can find in the contract with your internet provider. If your internet connection does not require you to log in, or if you do not know whether logging in is required or not, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Select Get Dynamically from ISP in the Internet IP Address section. In Domain Name Server section, choose Get Automatically from ISP also. If your ISP only allows a specific MAC address to connect to the Internet, you need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. If you are not sure about these settings, select Use Default MAC Address. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most cases, it is not necessary to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get an internet connection after the quick setup, later, in the video I will show you how to clone MAC address. Now you must reboot the router. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button. And click OK. After rebooting, wait a couple of minutes and try to Google something. If it failed, check all of the cables to make sure they are correctly connected. Then log into the router control panel again. Go to Basic, Internet, and choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button, and then Reboot Router again. After a few minutes, Check your internet connection. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. You can buy me a coffee. I donate 50% of all coffee's purchases to animal shelters. Details can be found in the description below.